Ladies and gentlemen, public officials, welcome to the belated groundbreaking of the Town Hall edition. I'd like to ask um, our county executive, William O'Neill, to come up and have a few words, please. Thank you. All right, I, I get to start, huh? Well, I'm going to tell you this, that I'm not running for office, so this is going to be uh, brief. <laughs> uh, but but I, I grew up in Hyde Park. You know, my family uh, had lived here uh, over 60 years. Uh, I went to grade school right down the street in Regina Chaley. And there are many fond memories and a lot of old friends. And uh, yeah, I truly love this town. And uh, that's why I'm excited to be here today for this, uh, the groundbreaking of the new addition here. And uh, you know, this is more than a, gr a groundbreaking. Uh, this is a sign of progress. And uh, it's the great job that's being done by Al and uh, his administration and the town board. And Al, I thank you for your stellar leadership, for your quality management, but most of all, because you care. And that's the most important thing. And it's so comforting because, you know, Hyde Park has had such a wonderful past. Uh, I think we're in real good hands and, and in a great situation in the present. And now I think through your efforts, you're ensuring that we're also going to have a great future. And so um, I'd like to uh, professionally and personally thank you. Thank you. Would Brad like to say a few words? I'm good, Al. You're good. How about Miss Serena? Go ahead. Go I'm, I'm always brief, but you know, serving on the town board and just seeing what's going on now with the building is just so exciting and thinking about like how people couldn't go downstairs for years. So it's just so awesome that this is happening and it's so exciting for Hyde Park. So um, thank you very much for everything that everybody is doing. Thank you. Thank you, so. I want to give you a little bit of history, about two or three minutes worth from our town historian about the previous town hall and where it was located. Here you go, Carney. I'm Carney Reinvall. I live across the street in the house with all the glass. Uh, so I get to see the project every day and it's really coming along nice. I appreciate that. Um, Hyde Park was incorporated in 1821 but I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, for uh, eight decades, the town board met in the homes of the town uh, board members. Um, and around the turn of the century, the, the 19th century into the 20th century, the um, person across the street where I live now uh, had become very wealthy. He married well. He married a very rich woman, a billionaire status. His name was Archibald Rogers. Uh, there was the Vanderbilt, the Rogers, and the um, Roosevelt estates. And Rogers uh, tore down a lot of houses. There were several houses between um, that house that's there now and Main Street. And he built a community building. Uh, it started out as a men's club. It was during the time when uh, they had a lot of men's clubs in New York City. So he thought he'd build one here in Hyde Park. And it became uh, very popular. Uh, th this is the, the building that he built. It was facing Main Street right across from where he grew up. And, um, uh, I'll pass that around, and I got spies in the audience here, and they'll make sure that we get it back into the museum. The museum is the building that uh, uh, Sue Serino and her son just purchased. Uh, it's on the first floor. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, you can see the windows of the Chamber of Commerce, and, and uh, on the other side is the museum. So we'll pass that around. This faced um, Main Street, 
That was in the around the turn of the century. Somebody wants to come up and pick it up and pass it around the audience. All right. Um, so that house, that uh, town hall uh, became the, the center of the, uh, Hyde Park. Uh, there are people that are still living that remember going up on the stage of that town hall and uh, for a Halloween party. It was, it was just a nice place. Eleanor Roosevelt had uh, um, uh, square dances in the, in the basement of the town, in the auditorium anyway, of the town hall. And this is where Franklin Roosevelt voted every time. And um, we have pictures of Roosevelt uh, in the museum. And we also, in the museum, we have the voting booth where Roosevelt voted in 1932 uh, against Herbert Hoover. And it's the only one we know of. Uh, only, the historians feel it's priceless, the voting booth that he, he voted at. So uh, that was the whole place burned down in 1964. And uh, the new building here with the bricks was uh, built in uh, 1968. The cornerstone says 1968. So that, that's pretty much the history of, in a nutshell anyway. Thank you, Carney. Today marks a moment. Um, momentous occasion as we gather here to witness the groundbreaking of an extraordinary project that will shape the future of the town hall. It is with great excitement and anticipation that I stand before you and share the vision, purpose, and immense potential of this groundbreaking endeavor. In today's fast-paced and ever-evolving world, progress is not merely an option, but it is necessity. It is through groundbreaking incentives like this that we are able to push the boundaries of what is possible and pave the way for innovative growth. This project stands as a testament to my promise to John Golden to build this addition. May he rest his soul. At its core, the groundbreaking venture embodies the spirit of transformation. This project holds immense, project, uh, immense promise, not only for the terms of economic growth, but also its potential to improve the quality of life for all those who call this community home. As we break ground today, we acknowledge challenges that lie ahead. Any groundbreaking endeavors come with its fair share of obstacles and setbacks, but let it be known that we are undeterred. We are prepared to face these challenges head on armed with resilience, pers perseverance, and shared vision of success. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have played a role in making this project a reality and dedicate, dedicated team of professionals from CPL, Pizza Taro, Jonathan Duraco, and Tim Moot, who have tirelessly worked behind the scenes in the, with vision leaders who have championed this cause and to John Golden for his unwavering support and enthusiasm. I used to stop at John's as we were going. He goes, Al, you got to get her, get her done. You got to build this thing. And I said, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Kept bringing him drawings as they were being developed. Talked to him. He's the one that informed us about the uh, old town hall was exactly where we're putting the building. So we had done some exploratory work out here and uh, found out that, yes, it was there. So um, we had done some cores. They're called core bores. But, um, and we found out it possibly that we would have to dig down eight feet and then come up with structural fill, if any of you understand that type of construction work. All right. Um, today we begin the journey towards the brighter future, a future where groundbreaking projects will serve as a beacon of progress, inspiring generations to come. <laughs> that when come together with a shared vision and purpose, there's no limit to what we can achieve. 
Let us celebrate this momentous occasion, knowing today marks the beginning of a remarkable journey. Today, let us embrace the challenges, seize the opportunities, and make this groundbreaking in initiative a resound success. Okay. Now, I'd like to thank, obviously, John Golden for his very generous contribution. And as soon as we took office, I got the pleasure of meeting him, and I made a promise to him. I said, we will get this out of the ground, designed, and built. And he kept warning me to hurry up. <laughs> Unfortunately, the day I told him it's out to bid, I went down and I talked to him. The day we awarded the contracts is the day John left. He didn't get to see the groundbreaking, and he didn't get to see the building coming up. But Gary and Liz, his John's daughter, only daughter, and Gary Hilton, now they're the Hiltons. Well, not the Hiltons, but the Hiltons. <laughs> they're the Hiltons of this town, put it that way. Are here, and we have definitely a lot of gratitude to your father, and with a lot of respect. I've gotten to learn him. I knew all about him, but I've never spoken to him. And he is definitely somebody I loved sitting there at the house and talked to, filled with information. Talked about, I think he built 99.9% of the, the whole town. <laughs> but uh, I thank everyone for being here. And it's been a pleasure to put this together. Obviously, we're in the construction business, so it worked out very well. And they're moving very quickly, quicker than we thought which uh, we will meet our budget. Um, right now, we, the, the bids came in $4 less or $4 more? $4 less? For purposes of this conference, $4 less. <laughs> OK, $4 less than my estimate. That's pretty good. <laughs> Either way, if you go through the huh? we, <laughs> Public bidding, you know what it is. Read them and weep. It's over. <laughs> but we are going to bring this in, and we're looking for other ways to get it under that budget. So I thank all of you for attending this groundbreaking and supporting the town of Hyde Park, which we all love and dear. Thank you very much. Before we do the shovels, I want to let everybody know I made this. I didn't make the shovel. <laughs> I spray painted it for you, and I put in love, loving memory of John and Gloria, and everyone here to, will be signing this and give it to you, OK? Now let's throw some dirt.